In demo 2, we'll add a second shift register to our circuit and drive an impressive 16 LED array, all lighting up at random patterns, while still only using a single data wire on the Arduino, plus latch and clock. The circuit from demo 1 is on the left of the breadboard. The new part on the right is made of the same arrangement of LEDs and resistors, plus the second shift register chip. Because there's so many LEDs drawing up a few milliamps of power each at random times, there will be a strain on the Arduino's power supply. To smooth out spikes in consumption, I have added an electrolytic capacitor directly on the power rails of the breadboards. The one I used in my circuit is 220 millifarads. Be careful of the polarity, it's clearly marked on the package of the capacitor. You may remember that we used a capacitor in the exact same way in the server motor lecture. Let's concentrate on the second shift register, chip number 2, for a moment. The first uh, shift register is chip number 1. Connect it like this. Take pin 11 of chip 1 and connect it to pin 11 of chip 2. Then take pin 12 of chip 1 and connect it to pin 12 of chip 2. Finally, and got to be careful about this, take pin 14 of chip 2 and connect it to pin 9 of chip 1. Pin 9 is the overflow bit from chip 1, so essentially we are carrying these overflow bits from chip 1 into uh, chip 2. Don't forget to connect the 5 volt breadboard rail to pins 16 and 10 on chip 2 and the ground pin to uh, pin 8 on chip 2. Don't worry about uh, pins 9 and 13. These are not connected to anything. In this circuit, essentially I've copied the left side of the circuit into the right side of the circuit. So I have added a second shift register. So this second shift register is there to control the right side of my breadboard um, and uh, it's exactly the same circuit either way but you can notice of course that I'm only using the same original number of control pins uh, the control pins that are used to control the original the first shift register now the second shift register I've set it up so that uh, it's pins 11 and 12 so the pins 11 and 12 uh, are connected uh, directly to pins 11 and 12 of the first chip, the first shift register. The only difference in the uh, configuration and the wiring is that now the data input pin on the second shift register, which is uh, number 14, so this is white wire here, that is connected to pin number 9 of the first chip, so pin number 9. So pin number 9 is the one that contains the overflow bit, so the bit that uh, has just was just pushed out of the, uh, the shift register's memories as uh, new uh, bits were uh, shifted in. So through this white wire, those overflow bits will shift into the second shift register and then stored one by one, stored in the sh second shift register. And those then will light up the LEDs. So um, just our exact copy of left side of the circuit to the right side of the circuit. Looking at the demo, uh, sketch, demo 2 sketch. Again, it's pretty much exactly the same. It's an identical um, sketch. Uh, just for effect, I've only added uh, a second random number generated from the same seed. So analog 0, so that will generate, use generate another random number from 0 to 255, so that's going to yield an 8 bit byte stored in here. Then after Shifting out the first random byte, I will shift out the second random byte and delay by 100 milliseconds. So nothing has changed in the right LEDs function. Um, in fact, I didn't really even have to do this. 
I would just uh, rerun the exact same sketch as in the first demo and I would still get the same effect with my LEDs. It's just that whatever random sequence was uh, first shifted into the first shift register would then be shifted out of the first shift register and into the second shift register. Uh, basically you'd get a copy of the pattern LED lighting pattern from the left to the right. I wanted to make it a little bit more random than that, that's why I added uh, another random number. But it's just as simple as that. I've also added a second capacitor just to take care of the spikes in current uh, draw, drawed by the second lot of uh, LEDs. So this second you've got a total of 16 LEDs lighting up in random patterns. Shift registers operate on a very simple principle. However, from experience, I know that it is a topic that tends to confuse new makers. Hang in there, read again, experiment with the circuits, and ask if you run into trouble. Once you understand the basics, you will be able to use them without much effort. I will come back to shift registers in an upcoming lecture on 7-segment displays. As an exercise, try this. Modify the sketch from demo 1 so that you can type in a number from 0 to 255 and have the binary representation of the number show up in the LEDs. You will need to figure out how to enter text in the console, and this is something that I have shown you how to do in a previous lecture. You can also try this. Modify the sketch from demo 1 so that the number of LEDs lit depends on the value coming out of a potentiometer. When the potentiometer is turned all the way to one direction, you will have no LEDs lit. When it's turned all the way to the other direction, you will have all of the LEDs lit, and accordingly for all other positions.